Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. So I just found a nice flush of these grey oyster mushrooms, Pleurotus ostriatus. A very good edible mushroom. In fact, I class them as a gourmet mushroom. They're very common and they can be found all year, but they're much more likely to be found this time of year in winter, sort of late autumn through winter. As soon as the temperature starts to drop, that is the time to be looking for grey oyster mushrooms. Look for grey oyster mushrooms on the deadwood of deciduous trees, mainly beech, but you'll also find it on chestnut, oak, and a few other deciduous deadwoods. I think this trunk here is horse chestnut from the, the look of the bark, and also all these branches next to it. They look like horse chestnut buds to me, and they're a bit sticky as well, which also suggests horse chestnut. So you'll see uh, grey oyster mushrooms, they grow, they can grow in quite large clusters and they also grow in shelves. To identify the oyster mushroom, first we look at the cap, the top part, which are convex and shell shaped. Especially on younger specimens, as they mature they flatten out like this and even go centrally depressed. When they're younger, they've got a, a silver gray color, sometimes a little bit of a bluish tinge to them as well. And as they get older, they go brown. On the younger ones, the, the margins are inrolled and they have a, a wavy margin which makes them look like oysters, like that there. The gills are a white to off-white creamy colour and they are crowded and deep. And very importantly with the oyster mushroom, the gills are decurrent, which means they run most of the way down the stem. They don't stop at the stem. So you see here, that's the current gills running most of the way down the stem to where it meets the wood. The stem or stipe isn't always present. Sometimes they're just growing straight laterally out of the wood. But normally when the stipe is present, they're thick and white. And they thicken out towards the cap. So at the top, they're a lot thicker and they taper towards the base and often at the base they're quite furry and that is the mycelial strands so the flesh of oyster mushrooms is white and fairly firm. It's usually tougher towards the stem. And these are quite wet because it's been raining a lot in the last few days. Normally in shops, you'll only be able to get these younger ones, which are still good, but they do cook down to water quite easily because they're very thin. But in the wild, you'll often find these ones are much better. The ones that are a bit bigger and more mature. The flesh is a bit firmer on these, so you can cook them without them cooking down too much. Interesting fact about oysters is that they're one of the few species of carnivorous fungi. So as well as decomposing 
plant matter for food. They also consume nematode worms. So it's not the actual mushroom itself that's carnivorous, but throughout this wood here and the soil around it, there will be a mycelial network, which is basically the, in a way, it's kind of like the root system of the mushrooms. And those, the uh, mycelial strand, they have these hyphal tips, which form like lassoes. So when nematode worms go through them, the hyphal strands tighten and capture the nematode worm and then consume it for nitrogen. Grey oysters I would class as a fairly easy mushroom to identify. You can also find pale oysters, Pleurotus pulmonarius. They're very similar to grey oysters but have a, a whiter cap. So these you do have to be a little bit more careful of because they can look quite similar to the poisonous angel wings mushroom. But when picking grey oyster mushrooms, the only other mushroom you really have to be aware of are oysterlings. Now, olive oysterlings can look fairly similar to the grey oysters. And it's still up for debate on their edibility. I know they're still eaten in some countries, but it's thought that they might be a carcinogenic, so I, I wouldn't take that risk. I'd stay away from oysterlings. Uh, they're much smaller than oysters. They only really grow up to about eight centimeters so they don't get much bigger than these sort of ones here so if you've got ones growing this size next to much bigger ones like this then you know that these are these are going to be gray oysters so you're safe with these also the gills on oysterlings are much darker than this and they have a much thinner stem you won't get the stout stems like you get on the grey oyster so what I like to do as I'm walking home through the woods just a little thank you to the mushroom basically is to take some of the mushrooms out and give them a bit of a tap to release the spores and you never know you might get more mushrooms from it next year or the year after so yeah with a more mature specimen of mushroom just go up to some dead wood, especially beach if you can find it, and give it a tap to release the spores. Uh, don't worry if you can't see the spores because they are tiny. <laughs>